Hi everyone, it's been a long time since I addressed this subject, so let's get back to doing some good old-fashioned creationist bashing, shall we? Here's what I found. What? Catholics? Okay, first, kids, run. Second, I think someone missed a PM because the position of the Catholic Church is that there is no conflict between science and the faith they promote. Except for that condoms prevent the spread of HIV, but yeah, let's not address that. Over the last few decades, scientists from around the world have been making discoveries which clearly show that an intelligent designer is responsible for the creation of the universe. No. Sorry, just no. There's nothing to indicate that, according to anyone who's doing any kind of science relevant to that issue. Many believe that the entire universe came into existence out of nothing by chance. Again, no, no one doing any kind of science in that field says anything of the kind. The closest thing you get to it is people like Lawrence Krauss and Stephen Hawking saying that the universe came from nothing as a result of deterministic natural laws. But I really hate the phrasing of that because what they mean is not that there was this thing called nothing and from this state of nothingness, and by the way, that's a contradiction in terms, because if you have nothingness, well, that's something. Um, from this state, a universe just arose. No, what they mean is that the universe didn't come from anything, it just began. No one says that there was nothing, and then that nothing produced a universe by chance. But if you really think about it, nothing couldn't bring the universe into existence because nothing produces nothing. Right, so now you know what I'm talking about. No one is saying that nothing produced a universe. The universe wasn't produced by anything. Get it? The universe wasn't produced. Everything that begins to exist must have a cause. Oh, she's not this crap again. <sighs> No, that's simply not true. I don't even know what that statement means. What, what does it mean to begin to exist? What's a cause? And does something that has always existed, in other words, existed for as long as time has, begin to exist? I mean, when did it not exist? That question doesn't even make sense. There are many forces in the universe that are precisely balanced that do things such as pull matter together. Without these forces, galaxies, planets, and stars would have never been able to form. Right, so you acknowledge that nature is in charge and that there is no omnipotent wizard involved who can just use his magic to override the laws of nature. Thank you. Many stars have been observed to expand and contract significantly. They go from very bright to very dim, even on a yearly basis. Fortunately for us, however, our star, the Sun, has an amazing stability. It does not expand and contract significantly like many other stars. So we find ourselves alive on a planet that can support our kind of life. That's exactly what we would expect under naturalism, and in fact, anything else would falsify naturalism. Some stars will actually explode violently into a supernova. The debris from these explosions are called supernova remnants. According to many evolutionists, this debris should be visible with telescopes for millions of years. Evolutionists? What, what does evolution have to do with this? But it, Okay, if you mean scientifically literate people, then no, no one says millions of years. The nebula, the, the debris cloud will disperse and cool off over time, and it will remain detectable for some time, depending on its surroundings. But we're talking about tens of thousands of years, maybe a hundred thousand. There are some that are, might be detectable for even longer, but no one is saying millions of years. 
According to scientific research, galaxies similar to our galaxy experience a supernova on average about every 26 years. I don't know where you got that number. I, I certainly question the accuracy of it, but I guess in astronomical terms, you're, it's probably not that far off. So you know what, let's go with it. But here's the problem. There's a difference between how many supernovae happen and how many of them can be seen from Earth. There's crap in the way in our galaxy. Therefore, if we know approximately how frequently they occur in galaxies similar to ours, the total number of supernova remnants we have in our galaxy should give us an idea of our galaxy's age. That's as stupid as saying that the number of football games currently in progress gives us an estimate of how long it's been since the game was invented. A total of 250 supernova remnants would indicate an age of around 6,500 years for our galaxy. Uh, no. The number we can see is one thing, and the number we can't see is another, and the number we can't see would include the number that have already faded away. So it's completely useless as a measurement for the age of the galaxy or the universe. However, it could be used to get a minimum age. And, well, since we can look at how long it would take for a supernova remnant to cool off to its current temperature and reach its current volume, we can actually count backwards and, you know, we can see that there are supernova remnants that are older than 6,500 years or whatever it is you're talking about. But to that you have to add the age of the star that went kaboom, which would be on the order of at least tens of millions of years. In order for us to exist on Earth, our sun had to be a star with just the right mass and temperature. Well, again, not if there's a god. In that case, the properties of the sun are completely irrelevant. Not too hot or too cold. Our sun generates a perfect amount of energy for life on Earth. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, isn't it? That life on Earth has adapted to the amount of energy it receives from the sun. That's it's almost as if it evolved naturally, isn't it? If the Earth were slightly closer to the Sun or farther away, it would be too hot or too cold for life to exist. Well, unless there's a god, obviously, then temperature is either irrelevant or can be adjusted by magic. The size of Earth is also right. Right for what? Right for the life forms that live here? That have evolved here? Oh gee, that's strange. And again, if there's a god, the size of the Earth doesn't matter. We also fortunately have the right size moon, primarily responsible for regulating the tides on Earth. Right, if things were different, then life on Earth would be different as a result. Unless there's a god, then it doesn't matter. In many cases, if you even slightly altered these precisely balanced factors, life would be impossible on Earth. Unless there's a god. On Earth, many different forms of life are completely dependent upon each other. Yes, and that's because they've evolved together over long periods of time, gradually becoming more and more dependent upon each other. Evolutionists have no explanation for why the Earth, unlike other planets, has such an incredible amount of water. What? Uh, other planets have water in large amounts. Um, Water is common. In fact, it's the most common compound in the universe. If what you mean is that we can't explain why the Earth has a lot of liquid water, then, well, yes, we can. It's because under the pressure and temperature conditions in most parts of our world, water takes on a liquid state. It, it, We also have a planet that is rich in oxygen. If our current 21% oxygen level were just a few percent higher, our atmosphere could become completely unstable and explosive. No, putting more oxygen into the atmosphere would not make it explosive. It would make fires burn easier and more wildly. And in fact, there used to be more oxygen in the atmosphere. And Hello, we're here. Earth has a magnetic field. Without this field, the solar wind would blow our atmosphere away. 
Okay, I know I'm not delivering these lines very well, but you're delivering your lines as if you're reading from a script that's right in front of your face, and you're reading it exactly as it's written, and the idiot who wrote it doesn't know how to punctuate. So, if you wrote it, congratulations, you're an idiot who doesn't know how to punctuate, and you also don't even know what you meant when you wrote it. But, to address what you said, you're right, and then we wouldn't be here. Unless there's a god. Earth's atmosphere blocks harmful sunlight, while at the same time it allows sunlight that is useful for life. Do I really need to hammer this in anymore? Look, the fine-tuning argument, the idea that things have to be this way, because otherwise we wouldn't exist. That's an argument for naturalism, because it's only under naturalism that things have to be this way in order for us to exist. If there's a god, then the laws of nature are irrelevant to whether we exist or not. Only under naturalism can you say, the laws of nature have to be this way. Everything we observe is perfectly consistent with us existing in a universe that is governed by natural law alone. But theists look at this universe and say, wow, this is so perfect, there has to be a god. There has to be a god who can perform miracles that defy the laws of nature. Because the laws of nature are so perfect that this being isn't needed. That's the exact opposite of what's indicated. To be continued. Say it. Wow, congratulations, you're not just an idiot who can't punctuate, you also clearly had no clue what... F Irony.